I put together some information today, something that I don't normally do, but after going through and analyzing a little bit of the experience, state of the automotive finance industry report, something struck me as a little bit surprising as to why some states lease more, some states don't lease as much. What's the science behind this? I want you to know that in the description below there's multiple resources to help you when you're shopping around for not only the best car deal, but to check out insurance rates as well as your FICO auto scores. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because this whole channel is gonna teach you everything you're gonna need to know so that you can negotiate your best possible deal. Now, after checking out the Experian report, I did see that for the most part, we are seeing that most of the lease originations that took place in the United States this year took place in the Northeast and in Michigan, and the least lease originations took place in the South, but also in West Virginia as well. Now, you're gonna see on the map of the United States that the Experian report has, it has all the states, the percentage of leased vehicles as a percentage of whole new vehicle sales. Um, this doesn't take into account previous year sales, it's just whatever was sold up until quarter two for that year. Going from highest to lowest, you guys, highest lease percentage was 70.1% in Michigan, going down this list, going all the way to 48.8 in Massachusetts, and going into lowest lease per percentages, New Mexico at 7.7%, going all the way down to 2.9% for Arkansas. Now, just dissecting this a bit further, you're gonna see the map completely emptied out, and it's in the south, it's red, in the northeast, it's green. And somewhere between Michigan and West Virginia, that green and red sort of meet. Don't know if it actually works that way, but that's what happened in this map, and just taking a look at credit scores for all these states, 690 for our lowest lease percentage state, Arkansas, and 715 for our highest lease percentage state, Michigan, and Massachusetts having the highest credit score. Now this ties into the next point that I'm gonna make is the income for these states. Now we are seeing Arkansas with a pretty decently low Median household income at 45,726. Michigan, not that, that much higher at about 55,000 per year. And Massachusetts, again, being one of the highest with 77,378, which is gonna tie into sort of the explanation behind as to why the states in the Northeast are leasing more than the states in the South. And before we do that, let's take a look at what these states are actually leasing. So just taking a look into IC cars data that they provided for new vehicle sales in 2020, Michigan, the most sold vehicle, new vehicle at least, was the Ram 1500. Going down this list, the Hyundai Tucson for Connecticut and New York, the Honda CRV for New Jersey and Massachusetts, and then we start getting into pickups. New Mexico, the Ford F-150, Louisiana, the Ford F-150, Oklahoma, the Silverado, West Virginia, the Ford F-150, and Arkansas with the GMC Sierra 1500. Now, being it that income is generally higher in the Northeast, we're seeing small, light SUVs coming in at more popular on the list, with Michigan being the exception, which pretty much is the capital of the big three anyway, so I can imagine why the Ram 1500 is the most popular there, if not the Ford F-150. But anyway, the highest income states are driving the cheaper vehicles, probably better to lease vehicles, and they're driving them probably to commute to their nine to five office type jobs, or maybe even work from home commuter cars, going to the grocery store, etc. In the South, you don't really need a pickup truck to go to an office job or a nine to five, but you probably end up doing that anyway, nothing against anybody in the South. But realistically speaking, the people that are driving these pickups are probably working more into the whole I need a pickup for work type of vehicle and needing a pickup for work, you may not be able to lease it with all that stuff 
that's happening in and around the car, worried about mileage, worried about damage, being able to modify it for work, etc. It just doesn't make sense to lease these vehicles given however many miles you're doing, what you're using the vehicle for in these states. And sometimes it may not make any sense to lease out a Ford F-150 when you're getting these fat rebates versus leasing out a Honda CRV or a Hyundai Tucson just as a commuter vehicle for the cheapest payment possible. So I really am curious to know your thoughts in the description below as to why the richer states by median household income are leasing the cheaper vehicles and why the states that are making less money driving and not leasing the more expensive vehicles. As I mentioned before, links are in the description below so you can shop around for not only a new car, but check out insurance rates as well as your FICO auto scores. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing. Thank you so, so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.